stand with us? Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, why we spacious skies or amber waves of rain over purple mountains majesties above the rooted plain America America God standing as Cecilia leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Please remain standing for a moment. Jesus said in John chapter 15, greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you a million times to those who serve, uh, to those who have served. But on Memorial Day, especially today, we remember those who gave their lives to keep us free, those who, who made choices uh, for us, uh, allowing us the privilege to be able to meet, the privilege to be able to come, the privilege to be able to stand, the privilege to be able to speak, privilege to be able to share our faith. I'm so grateful that I live here. I'm grateful that I live during this time. Uh, the Bible says that we're not to trust in our money, we're not to trust in our, our armies, we're not to trust in our horses or our gold, but God has blessed us with a strong military and he's blessed us with people who, who love him, he's blessed us with people who love this country. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you to those who are serving, to those who have served, and especially Today we remember those who gave their lives to keep us free. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to, to stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. We're able to cross the bridge uh, built by those who made the sacrifices before us. We're able to live this life because others gave theirs. Lord, thank you for these people. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this time. And Lord, while we are saddened that people lost their lives, Lord, we can only say that we're grateful. We're grateful. We're filled with appreciation for their love for this country, for their willingness to, to lay down their lives that we might enjoy these freedoms. God, I pray that we would not squander the sacrifices that they have made. I pray that we would be faithful to you, faithful to stand, faithful to serve, faithful to speak while we still have the opportunity. We love you, Lord. We're grateful that you loved us first. And for whatever reason, Lord, thank you that you let us be here at this time in this place. We love you and we trust you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Man, I'm so glad you're of all the places you could have been this morning. You chose to come here. You know what that means? That means you are so cool. <laughs> 
chromatic shades. <laughs> now, I don't know that you're that cool, but you're pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, don't you know it's a holiday? You're not supposed to be in church. You're supposed to be someplace else. But of all the places you could have been, you chose to come here. And we're grateful. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. We're, we're, we're here, so let's figure out how to make God grin. Uh, I told the earlier service, I know this is not God, but you, you kind of get the idea. We're, we're here together, so how do, we, how, do we, how do we glorify God? That's the Bible phrase that I like to kind of bring to a place where I can understand it. How can I make God happy? How can I make God grin? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Jesus said, as long as you're here, live for him. As long as you can hear, listen to him. He said it like this in Matthew chapter 7. Everyone who hears my words, everyone who reads the Bible and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built a house on a stone on a rock. Oh, yeah. But foolish people build oh, yeah, their yeah, yeah. houses. <laughs> Not so good. And the rains come, Jesus said, and the winds blow. And what happens to that house? But Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, everyone who hears the Bible, everyone who reads the Bible and puts them into practice, everyone who builds a life on his Bible and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. God wants us to be busy building our lives on his Bible. And when we do, it's going to show. People are going to notice. They might call you a holy roller. They might ask, what got into you? And you can say, Jesus. Well, I'm working on a building. It's a true foundation. I'm holding on the blood stain.
working on a building. God wants us to be busy. He wants us to be busy building our lives on his Bible. Building our lives on the Bible will make God happy. I don't know if you want this, but it's going to make you holy. When you come closer to Jesus, it's going to change your life. When you listen to his words and you let them in and then you let them out, it's going to change your life. Building our lives on the Bible will make God happy and make us holy. And God really wants us to be watching for him. He wants us to be listening for him. He wants us to be leaning toward him. He wants us to be learning from him. He wants us to be watching, watching. He wants us to be watching for him. He said it like this in Luke 13. Therefore, keep watch because you don't know when the master of the house will return. Whether in the evening, at midnight, when the rooster crows, or in the morning, you got to be watching. Don't close your eyes. Keep watching for the master. Keep watching for the Lord to come. Otherwise, he may arrive without notice, without warning, and find you sleeping. And I say to you, I say to everyone, keep watch. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel it in heart your destination, not just because you want to go there, not because we think we deserve to go there, but because we believe the Bible. We believe God. The Bible says we're sinners and none of us deserve heaven. But Jesus loved us so much that he came. He lived. He died. was buried. rose from the dead so that any of us, any of you, anyone who believes could come to him by faith and be forgiven, be redeemed, be saved, so that at some point when we leave this place, we're heavenward bound. God really wants us to be watching for him. And he really wants us to be working for him. Now, you know, you've given your life to the Lord. You're really trying to live for the Lord. It's easy from there, right? It's not even. Life can be tough. And, and sometimes you can hit your head against the wall so many times. Good morning, it's kind of hard Stella. To, kind of hard to get Good motivated. Morning. Kind of, oh, it's kind of hard tired. to get up again. Good to do morning. It. I, I want to make it this time. And then you... Uh, yeah, life can be tough, man. Sometimes it's hard to get motivated. But when you decide, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get after it. And when you, when you decide to get after it, it means you're going to have to get going. And to get going, to get after it, means it, it's going to take some effort. But that effort is going to show. Go. People are going to be even working on this. Good job, Norman. Good job, Norman. Now, if he can do it, oh. if only
Somebody the Christian life was learning how to ride a what is that? Scooter. I knew it was a scooter. <laughs> Trying to live for the Lord is easy, yeah? Impossible. Trying to live for the Lord is something he wants, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen to him, you, you trust him, you believe it, you let him in, he forgives you, and you decide now, with God's help, in Jesus' name. I want to live this life. But when you decide to come to him, when you decide to live this life, it's going to show. That sounds spooky. I like it. <laughs> well, among the local tempers, there'll be a slack in business. Yes, he's drinking came before groceries and the rent. Among the local women, there'll be a slack and cheap. Jesse won't be stepping out again. Jesus, it ought to be different, yeah? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I was messed up. And now I'm messed up, but I'm saved messed up. But maybe a little less messed up than I was before. And tomorrow, a little, little less messed up than I can't say it, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm a little less messed up today than I was yesterday. Tomorrow will be a little less messed up than I am today. In the day after tomorrow, 
because I, I really, really, really want to become more like Jesus. I really do. I really do. I'm messed up, and I really do. As close as you are to the Lord, I know you really do. You give your life to Jesus, and that means that you give your life to Jesus. And guess what he's going to want to do with you? He's going to want to change you. He's going to want to save you, not just your soul, but your life. And that means you're going to change. You're going to be different. And it's going to be easy every single time, yeah? Not even. You're going to try to live for Jesus. You're going to try and fail. Try and fail. You're going to try and fail. you got to have it. You quit the habit. And then the next morning, you got to quit the habit again. And, you know, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to. Oh, when am I ever going to quit? When am I ever going to start doing what God wants me to do? Okay, this time I'm going to this, this, and this time, and this time I'm going to, and ah, getting after it means you got to get after it. You're going to try, you're going to fail. Every once in a while, you're going to give it a shot, you're going to miss. Every once in a while, it's going to look good. You're going to, you're going to hit the goal. Every once in a while. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> In a while, you're gonna give it a shot, man. You really got I'm gonna live for Jesus today. I'm not gonna say those words anymore, or I'm gonna say the words I'm supposed to say. I'm really gonna to try to live for the Lord, and sometimes you get it, and sometimes you just don't. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, it doesn't start on the outside, it starts on the ah, inside. Look at that. Wow. Blessed are those who hunger. Oh, yeah, that's Blessed good stuff, those isn't who Oh my, oh, oh, I bet you'd like some of this, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah, good girl. You want it real bad. I, I want that. I want that. You think the puppy wanted that, whatever the heck it was, egg McMuffin or whatever? You, you think he, I think he wanted it. How could you tell? Can people tell when you want something real bad? Probably. Can they tell that you want Jesus real bad? Can they tell that we want to live for him real bad? Sometimes we're embarrassed to let people see us drooling for Jesus. I, I get it. But Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I'll get closer to you. I'll bless you. You will be filled, Jesus said. But when you decide you want to come close to Jesus, uh, it does feel different on the inside. It's going to look different on the outside. It's going to feel different on the inside. It's going to look different on the outside. Did I say yet? It's going to feel different on the inside. And it's going to look different on the outside. You come to Jesus, not perfect, but prepared to let him fill you. To let him change you. My life is an empty cup Here's my heart, would you fill me up My face to the ground Forsaking my plan Leaving my will My burdens be
Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. Christ wants us to get closer. Get closer. Jesus wants us to jump in, jump in. God wants us to make him grin. Figure out ways to glorify God. God, what do you hate? Ah, oh, help me stay away from that. Jesus, what do you love? Oh, help me do that. God, what would you like me to say today that's different? God, what do you want me to do? God, you want me to do the same thing I did yesterday, today? Then help me do that. God, if you want me to be different, help me be different. Blessed are those who really, 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 really want to live for Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Christ wants us to get closer. There are some people who can help you come closer to Jesus. There are some people who can cheer you on in your, in your walk with the Lord. There are some people who, who know a little more Bible than you. There are some people who have experiences, some better, some worse, but they can, they can kind of help you around some of the pitfalls, some of the potholes, some of the brick walls of life. Should I say some people are better for you than others? Some people you just want to stay away from. You know who they are. Who's helping you walk for Jesus? Who's helping you get closer to the Lord? And who's just there to poke you, man? Maybe they're a ministry project. Maybe there's somebody you love and you're really trying to lead them to God. But your best buddies, the ones you wrap your heart around, the ones you wrap your life around, they ought to be, if you're lucky, that's a good Bible word, isn't it, lucky? If you're lucky, you wrap your life around people who are closer to Jesus than you are. If you're really smart, you get close to people who love the Lord more than you love the Lord, and that's a lot. Some people are better for you than others. Need I say more? Jesus said, I really want you to get close to me, because I really want to get close to you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they get their back scratched. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus wants you to get closer, so get closer. Lord Jesus, you've been so good to us. We are so grateful for the life that you've, you've allowed us to live. Thank you, Jesus, that you loved us so much that you came from heaven. You've lived this life. You died on the cross. You, you paid that sacrifice for us. You were actually buried. And on the third day you rose from the dead and, and you offered salvation, you've offered forgiveness, you've offered redemption to any one of us who would believe you and trust you. And Jesus, and folks, I hope you can pray this with me. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I believe you. Jesus, I need you. Help me hunger and thirst for righteousness. Help me, help me want you real bad, Lord. Help me want to live for you real bad. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus, we pray that we be filled. Thank you for the opportunity to, to come to you, to live for you, to honor you, to please you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In your name we pray and everybody said amen, amen. God bless you. It's still early. You can go or we can sing some more.
Thank you for your heart. Thank you for this church. Thank you for these people. And God, we pray that as you, as you move us from this place, that we would be found faithful. God, we pray that we would find ourselves hungering more and thirsting more to get close to you, to hear you, to live for you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will have their back scratched and they will be filled. God, help us get that close to you. Help us, help us, help us live for you. In your name we pray and everybody said... Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming. Hang around for a while if you can. Sometime back I received in the name of our country the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a serviceman. For we're never quite good enough to them. Not really. We can't be because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole, and all we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers.